My name is uh, Alexander Gyokas. I am the co-founder of uh, Mekyun. There's an interesting story behind the startup because we are we actually used to work for research for the European Union for FP7 and Horizon 2020 projects. And we did robotics in healthcare and uh, robots as elderly companions and so on. And soon enough we realised that there is an approach to a lot of problems that are very specific to dementia, where nurses go around with notepads, taking notes over and over and over again. And we realise that this is something that can be automated and not only can be automated and help nurses and their health systems, but we can actually do the same procedure in people's homes. Back in February, uh, me and my co-founder Maria Ramos, we decided to incorporate and start working on observing dementia signs, early signs, which are uh, behaviour indicators that are used in hospitals and clinics in people's homes using computer vision, deep learning and try to correlate those uh, visual indicators and those emotional behaviour uh, signs to the appearance and deterioration of dementia in the person. Right now what we do is look at the emotional state of the people the system is observing over a long period of time and what we achieve by doing that is actually look at the time frame of emotional, um, let's call them spikes, or um, key indicators of concern, of major concern or minor concern. And we collect all that data, which is, by the way, it's not visual data, it's just metadata. And we are doing, um, we're about to start doing clinical trials with a few hospitals and see how that data can be um, correlated to predicting dementia or uh, having a look and see if someone's already been diagnosed with dementia, if uh, his or her condition is getting worse, if it's stable, if they are dealing with it and so on. And this is basically a platform of sorts. So there's an endpoint that collects the data and then there's a, a platform, a backend that does all the, all the processing and creates the reports and the analytics and the insights. We started using NVIDIA STX2 platforms um, with a um, custom uh, carrier board and uh, Intel D415 um, depth sensing cameras. Because the initial requirements were that we needed to have uh, depth sensing and uh, stereoscopic vision. Soon enough we realised that we can achieve similar things uh, without depth sensing by using convolutional uh, neural networks and uh, deep networks that do image classification and image segmentation. So we abandoned the idea of using the TX2 because it's a very expensive uh, platform and uh, started using Raspberry Pi 0Ws where we essentially collect the data from the Raspberry which is acting as an endpoint. We send the data to uh, a cloud platform it does the uh, pre-processing and post-processing and then the user can actually um, have a look at the reports and the graphs and the metadata of what's being processed on a simple website or a smartphone app. Uh, the software uh, we programmed um, relies on a very large part on PyTorch, which as you might know is a platform developed by uh, Facebook engineers, uh, software engineers. We basically use PyTorch, CUDA, NVIDIA's CUDA and heavy GPU computation to um, either create our own neural uh, architectures and models and train them or existing ones state of the art like Google's ResNet and train it on the data we have and we're collecting and will be collecting. Most of it is written in Python, apart from the, uh, the web front and um, the web stuff, which is in Node.js, really, and uh, HTML5. There isn't a similar product on the market like what we have yet. And um, there are, I'm aware that there are other startups that are working on very similar things. There's one in Singapore which is taking a similar approach to ours but tailor it, tailor it towards uh, hospitals and clinics. There's another one in Spain which is doing something very similar, but right now what we're really trying to build and what is truly unique about what we're doing is that it's a very passive system with no um, 
let's say, interference to a person's life. You don't have to wear it, you don't have to program it, you don't have to interact with it. You just put it on the wall and forget it's there. And it keeps working 24-7, continuously gathering the data, adapting to user behaviour and learning from the user behaviour in order to come up with some, let's say, insights and analytics that are very specific to that specific person. One of the major problems we've identified is early infections. So in people who are over 65 and especially in people who are over 80 years old, um, infections, once they get a hold of the person, usually become worse and worse and worse and they create secondary problems, health problems. But those are all features that we're not really looking into implementing just yet. Right now we're just focusing on dementia and making sure that we can detect it and pinpoint the signs as best as possible. From a technical perspective, the biggest challenge we have is processing tons of data per day, per second. And I'll give you an example. Right now, the prototype we have produces about 20 gigabytes per day, uh, per, day per person. So we're talking about a lot of data from just one single customer. So we need to come up with some kind of algorithm that reduces that amount of data so it makes it realistic for us to process it either real time or near real time. Another problem we have is that um, deep learning accuracy fluctuates so we need more data in order to become more accurate in order to be better at what it is that we're doing. But I think the biggest problem we have so far is not technical and that is um, ensuring people and making them understand that there is this what we're doing is absolutely safe and private that we are not actually collecting video or uh, images from people's homes that we're just looking at features that have already been extracted at the um, data endpoint the, the hardware and that we're not spying in their houses or trying to um, you know survey and monitor what what's actually happening in there in the houses Our attitude towards um, Startup Bootcamp um, has changed dramatically since we actually started. We were a bit skeptical at first, but I realised that what they're doing here is truly amazing. Um, from the mentoring and the workshops and the advice and the custom feed, custom feedback and criticism, which is a necessary part, we found ourselves actually refining and refining and refining the idea, the approach, the technical bits as well as the business uh, parts of, uh, of the startup. And it, this is truly unique. I've, uh, I've never seen this before. I have, I have never experienced this before. What we are actually expecting out of it is hopefully such a refined plan, business plan and technical, um, let's say, scheme that will make it actually feasible and sustainable as a business rather than you know taking risks or being on the borderline of this is gonna succeed, this is gonna fail. <laughs>